I'm Eli. I'm Jason. And I'm Kaden. And we are the Who in the Tour YouTube channel. And we are kind of dysfunctional today because we had some mean commenters say that we were, he couldn't understand us. What did he say? We were dysfunctional? I don't remember what it was. Um, they couldn't understand. Yeah, we didn't enunciate. We went too fast. Where's the fire? And um, it hurt the feelings of the kids. And it really shouldn't hurt the feelings of the kids because we are from the world of computers. And so Nicole and I, I came from Google. Nicole and I have run ISPs, internet service providers all our lives. So all our lives we do computer stuff. And so if you guys ever talk to computer people, they talk a thousand times faster than normal people, at least a good computer person, because our minds work way differently. We work as a processor on a computer works and it is with zeros and ones and we function real fast and we, we, we go real fast. And so we are super sorry if it doesn't come out right the guy said we would have a much better podcast if we practiced this, and he asked us where the fire was. And I'll tell you where the fire is. The fire is in we are trying to shake flour and bugs out of flour every single day. We get up around 5-ish, and um, everyone's up around 6-ish, and we are... We don't, it's just all day work. Every day is work. And if we did not physically stop and have everybody come to this table, we would not be able to read this stuff with you guys. And so for those of our family out there who we love very, very much, uh, the Clarissas and the Grands and the Ancient Remnant Path and who else? Who else do we have the other day? It was Clarissa. Carla. Carla. Much love to Carla. We love Carla. And she gave us some really super nice stuff. Um, talking, you know, helping us out and um, the prayers you guys have, you know, we really don't want thousands of people on this channel. And this is the cool thing about this channel is we have unlimited subscribers. It never, ever ends. And if you guys don't know why, if you go back, I guess, to the beginning of this channel, we have a Hebrew praise and worship um, thing that kind of went viral and it gets a thousand new subs a month. And we immediately lose 250 of them because they <laughs> they get all uh, warm and fuzzy and stuff listening to the music of Yah. And then they come and hear the message of Yah and they're very offended because they do not like the laws, statutes and commands of our creator. And they do not like to keep his ways. And that is what we are about. And this is what this channel will always be about. And we thank you guys, all of our digital family out there. We love you guys more than anything. We appreciate you guys. And it is truly a large family. Um, so for all of you guys out there, huge hugs. We appreciate you. Thank you for spending these few moments with us and with the word of Yah. And hopefully we can um, articulate this the best of our abilities. And you are understanding the words coming out of my mouth. Okay, so with that, let us begin and see where we are at. Gentlemen, Kate, how you doing? Good. How you doing? Everything good? Yeah, yeah. Where are we at? Tell me where we we're are at. We are in the final chapter of Exodus. So a little bit of a quick recap of everything in Exodus. We had Moses was sent down to Pharaoh after the children were enslaved for 400 years. This is way after Joseph died in Genesis. And now, basically, he saved them. He brought them out of the hand of Pharaoh after Pharaoh basically let, held them forever until Yah cursed him with 10 different plagues. Yes, and let me go back to one little point I would like to make because I sent out a text the other day, not text, but whatever the posts are here on YouTube. And I said, we have in the next, I think it was three to six months is what I put, or maybe four to eight months, three to four months. The, your, the ability to buy food like we know is going to be off the charts. And... I can tell you this simply from experience, and I know there's a gal out there who uh, I think is homeless, and she has a dog. What, what was her name? Uh, Rhonda. Rhonda. Yeah, Rhonda's out there, and she's like, well, you're, you're, you're something about fear, and you know that's the thing that we have is Joseph went, and imagine the world today if Joseph hadn't stocked up in some food, right? The only reason that they knew a famine was coming is because the hand of Yah actually went out and told him, told um, the, the Pharaoh at the time. And so Yosef was able to say, hey, we're going to have seven years of good and seven years of bad. And for the last five years, I've been pretty much screaming to everybody that there is a famine coming and everybody needs to plan accordingly. And I know a lot of people are unable to plan accordingly because the time is very short. But if you are still able to plan at all, this is the time that you would want to do this. And take for an example, we used to buy a bag of fertilizer down here for like 28 bucks. 
And I think it went up to 38 bucks, and then it was like 50 bucks. Now it's $90. So they are cutting off fertilizer across the world. And if you guys don't understand what that means, it means there is a orchestrated famine that is coming upon all of the lands. And if we do not prepare, we will absolutely must or will require a miracle from Yah to feed us. And I don't think that's a problem. And I think he would definitely do that. And this may be where all of us are going. But you guys still have three or four months left where you guys can stock up on some stuff. You guys can still do this. And I realize that faith is absolutely everything. And but you still have a little bit of time. And so if Joseph went and neglected what what Yah had told him and they didn't stock up, the Yashrael would be dead. There would be nobody to extract out of Egypt and it, everything would be gone. So Yah has given us plenty of time and has told us for years. And, and now these crazy people out there are telling us, oh, yeah, the famine's coming. Uh, be ready. It's all, you know, and they're killing the bees. They're killing the plants. They've burned down thousands of um, stores and different kinds of produce things in the States, across the world. And so this is not a fear thing. This is fear is when you're not prepared, right? That is where you get fear. If you are prepared, you can avoid the fear. And so this is what I'm saying, guys. If you understand what I am saying, this is now the time to do what you can to mitigate it. And there will be some places, people probably working on farms and different things, where it's not going to be such a problem. But they are bringing in a new world government. They're bringing in the new world order. The mark of the beast has come. It has gone. And it's not gone. It's come and it has stayed with us and it is continuing on. And um, people are people are dropping dead. People are dropping dead day after day after day. Thousands of them. And so we must be aware of the times that we are in so that we as Yah's people have an opportunity to endure to the end, right? That is what our Messiah says. You need to endure to the end. And Messiah Yahushua, he says even the sparrows have food. He says, don't, don't worry about what you're going to eat. But at the same time, we must, we still have time right? We're not in the miracle where we need a miracle right this second. So if you are able to use capable hands and bring more stock to your house at any way you can, that's probably a really good idea. And again, it's not fear because I do believe that y'all will completely grab the people who are his and we will be wherever the exodus occurs, what, however it happens, I believe that we will be part of it. I hope and pray. So, Cade, okay, tell us where else. You got to the Pharaoh and that. So, after we, they left Egypt, they were on their way out to the wilderness. They crossed the sea. They uh, opened up for them. They sat at the mount and for, for quite a while. And then Yah came down and spoke to them in a cloud, and it scared the Israelites. So Moses went up by himself to talk to Yahuwah. But while he was gone, the people uh, built a golden calf. They built an idol, which he had told them right before, don't do that. And they went and did it. So there was kind of a separation between them. So Moses had to go back up because he destroyed the Ten Commandments. And now he came back down and we're building the things that we're told to build. All the instructions he said, build the altar, build the Ark of the Covenant, build the temple. And that's what we're working on right now. All right. So thank you very much. And um, hopefully if that guy's still around that uh, didn't think we articulated. I hope we articulated enough on this for you, my friend. All right. Here we are. So let's begin our handy dandy split screen. We will go into our Sefer here and we will begin. Okay, Exodus 40. And Yahuwah has spoken to Moshe saying, On the first day of the first month, you shall set up the tabernacle of the tent of assembly. And you shall put therein the ark of the testimony and cover the ark with the veil. And you shall bring the table and set in order the things that are to be set in order upon it. And you shall bring in the menorah and light the lamps thereof. And you shall set the altar of gold for the increase, incense, sorry, not increase, for the increase, incense before the ark of the testimony and put the hanging of the door to the tabernacle. And you shall set the altar of the ascending smoke offering before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of assembly. Okay, so anyone know what we're doing so far? So we have all the things they built, all the little utensils, all the, the uh, ark of the covenant. And he says, okay, now that it's, everything's built, you're going to go put it in here. Here's how I want to put, I want the all the Ark of the Covenant in the back, behind the veil. 
I want the lamp stands here on these tables. Now put the rest of the stuff here. Yeah, so everything in Yas Temple is his design, his ways, his everything. And so that's interesting. All right. Six or we on seven? Seven. There we go. And you shall set the laver between the tent of the assembly and the altar and shall put water therein. And you shall set up the court round about and hang up the hanging at the court gate. And you shall take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is therein and shall hollow it and all the vessels thereof and it shall be holy. And you shall anoint the altar of the, ascend of the ascending smoke offering and all his vessels. They call it his. So the anointing altar is a his. Did you guys say his? Oh, it says it's. So this one's this one's uh, masculine, and the I guess the other one's up there says it's. So. Yeah, mine just as well. There's no like, the K KJV say. says his. All right, well there you go. His vessels and sanctify the altar, and it shall be an altar most holy. And you shall anoint the laver and his foot and sanctify it. And you shall bring Aaron and his sons in unto the door of the tabernacle of the assembly and wash them with water. And you shall put on Aaron the holy garments and anoint him and sanctify him that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And you shall bring his sons and clothe them with coats. And you shall anoint them as you anointed their father that they may minister unto me in the priest's office for their anointing shall surely be an everlasting priesthood throughout their generations. Thus did Moshe according to all that Yahuwah commanded him, so did he. And it came to pass on the first month in the second year, on the first day of the month, that the tabernacle was reared up. Bum, bum, bum. So when was this? This was like a celebration day. And it came on the first month in the second year. So in the month of, the first month. Because uh, it's not a So it took an entire year to build all this. Yeah, Maybe probably. less because they were still, in, they walked out of the. Uh, yeah, and they were, I don't know if they were like stuck or they were still moving. I don't know if they were moving at this point. I, mean, I think they might have been moving. I don't know. I think, I think they've taken down and put it back up everywhere they go. Well, yeah, but this is they're bringing it right up. So this is a huge, huge day. Okay, and Moshe reared up the tabernacle and fastened his sockets and set up the boards thereof and put in the bars thereof and reared up his pillars. Up His pillars, again. So this, they, they put this as masculine. Unless it raised up its columns. Yeah. And he spread abroad the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering of the tent above it, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And he took and put the testimony into the ark and set the staves on the ark and put the mercy seat above upon the ark. And he brought the ark into the tabernacle and set up the veil of the covering and covered the ark of the testimony as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And he put the table in the tent of the assembly upon the side of the tabernacle northward without the veil. And he set the bread in order upon it before Yahuwah as Yahuwah had commanded Moshe. And he put the menorah in the tent of the assembly over against the table on the side of the tabernacle southward. And he lightened the lamps before Yahuwah as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And he put the golden altar in the tent of the assembly before the veil. And he burnt sweet incense thereon as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And he set up the hanging at the door of the tabernacle. And he put the altar of the ascending smoke offering by the door of the tabernacle of the tent of assembly and offered upon it the ascending smoke offering and the oblation as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And he set the labor between the tent of the assembly and the altar and put water there to wash withal. And Moshe and Aaron and his sons washed their hands and their feet thereat. When they went into the tent of assembly and when they came near unto the altar, they washed as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And he reared up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging of the court gate. So Moshe finished the work. Then a cloud covered the tent of the assembly and the glory of Yahuwah filled the tabernacle. And Moshe was not able to enter into the tent of the assembly because the cloud abode thereon and the glory of Yahuwah filled the tabernacle. So that was interesting right there. So, and Moshe was not able to enter into the tent of the assembly. So that's, uh, I mean, what are we talking here? So then a cloud covered the tent of assembly and this the glory. This is the tent of appointment. This is that other tent. Right. So Moshe was not able to even enter that. Yeah. So when the cloud is there, he's not allowed to go in. Yeah, probably not. Probably get you owned or something. I don't know. Probably not good. Um, Okay, 36. And the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle. The children of Yashrael went onward in all their journeys. But if the cloud were not taken up, then they journeyed not till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of Yahuwah was upon the tabernacle by day, and fire was on it by night, in the sight of all the house of Yashrael throughout all their journeys. Okay, that's very interesting here. So let's let's discuss this and let's let's talk a little bit about how Yah had that happen. So I would assume that it, back in the day, every day you would look out your tent and you would look to see if there was a cloud over the top of it. 
And if there wasn't a cloud, you obviously start packing up your stuff and it's time to go. But that is something that everybody should probably take note of is that Yah wants you to look up on him every single day, right? You wouldn't get out of your tent probably without looking to see if the cloud was still above it. Is Yah still in your life? Is he still dwelling in your life? Have you, uh, do you need to move on? Do you, you know, what is, what is the answer? But this is very interesting, right? Because as a family, if we were all in a tent and we had to look out every single day, I didn't see the cloud. All of a sudden we'd be like, quick, let's go. Let everybody be in a rush. It would be, it would be kind of a crazy day. And I, I would, I would imagine, you know, he gave them like a day to, to set up or to take off or something, or I don't know if they had to take off that day if they, cause everybody's intense, right? There's no houses. There's, there's no of, nothing. There's a lot to pack up. There's a lot to pack up. And you, as, as I guess that's the point of, of, you know, the, the feast of booths, right? The, of the sukkah is that we are able to live like that, right? We're our, all of our dwellings are right there, right? When we're ready to move, we pick up all our stuff. There's not a, probably a tremendous amount to pick up. I mean, you would have your clean stuff, like your, your cooking stuff, all that stuff you would have to unpack. But if we saw it, I mean, let's just run through this as a family, we're in a tent. We probably have a little kitchen inside our tent, right? So immediately we saw the cloud gone. We need to pack up all our, our cooking stuff, any clothes that we had laid out, our beds, we need to come up. Um, what else is in a tent, right? That's about it, right? That's about it. Your blankets, your clothes, and your cooking. You're right. When and you, so I don't yeah. know if I mean, some of these they'll be able to hear you back there. Some of these people came out with a lot of stuff from Egypt, a lot of riches. Right, but that went into a molten calf. Or some of it went into a molten yeah. giant molten calf already. But so they've then already they burned to some get of all their cattle and all their livestock right. together and get them moving. Right, and so that would be interesting. And so you would, you would want a big family back in this day so that you're able to do this. If you're only like two people in a tent and you're having to break the entire tent down and get whatever you have. And I, I don't think everybody had cattle, but I, I'm sure a lot of people had cattle. And so it would be an interesting day. I don't know so much as we would be able to, I, I, I guess we would see no cloud and we would get out of there by 11 o'clock or something, you know, no cloud, get everything packed up and we're on the road and you just keep moving until, uh, I don't know when y'all would say, hey, stop, because I don't know if they set up this uh tabernacle again while they're on the route move or what exactly or who said to stop and where where how do they know when to stop and i guess maybe we'll figure this out as we're, we're reading on that but the point I, that i'm trying to make here is that yah wants everybody to look out their door every single day and, and look for him and i mean how how are how would you see that Jaden? uh you basically uh read his torah you basically stay in his word to see if y'all is still with you obey yeah. his laws if you're not obeying his laws he's probably not with you all right so how many of you guys read your bibles this morning Caden did. All right, I got one hand up. You I did too. You liked it? You did? Yep. You did? Uh, I went over our Proverbs. Yeah. Oh, that's good. All right, I got two two of five of us that, that read Bibles this morning. So that is that is probably the key and the goal is, are you in the word of Yahuwah every single day? Are you able to seek Yah in everything that he does? Because without Yah, we have no future. We have no hope. We have no nothing. Because these monsters that are overtaking the world, they're in for blood. They're in for taking over everything, right? It's... Um, it's probably the worst of times. And the Bible has talked about this. We've known about this. We've been told about this. And so we need to look out our doors every single day. And we need to see if there is a cloud over the tent. And we need to see if we are still in Yah. And the only way that we're going to be able to do that is if we're listening to his voice. If we are listening to his words. If we are putting our lives in his hands. And His, he will save us. Right? I'm not saying, you know, when I talk about you know, saving up and doing the last few months that you have and trying to get the very best that you can in the next few months. I do believe the hand of Yah will save those who are keeping his laws, statutes, and commands. And the two qualifications of a saint are what, Eli? Those who believe in Yahushua and those who keep his commands. Yep, and that's Revelations 14, 12. All right, everybody. Um, yeah, and I'm sorry, you know, for anybody that makes us think that we're like running to a fire. We, we kind of are. Our days are extremely busy and we love to hang out with you guys. Um, but at the end of the day, we have a farm to run and we must get to work. And so we thank you guys very, very much. I know your days are all busy. I know you guys are all have plans and things. So we just want to say we love you guys. We thank you all. And we hope that you guys are reading your Bibles. Seeking the word of Yah. Salvation begins where, Jade? At the stake of the tree. At the stake of the tree. Give, give us a little bit more hope than that. Uh, in Yehoshua, we have repentance of sins. That he's Who's Yehoshua? He's the son of Yahuwah, the son of God. And some people say it's Yeshua. Yeshua, Yehoshua. It's, uh, Yahshua. 
That's closer Yasha. than Jesus. Yes, yeah, way closer than Jesus. We don't know exactly the way it is. It, it could be, I believe it's Y A H U S H U A, like Joshua, but Yahushua. So, but you know, a lot of people say Yeshua. That seems like it flows really super good um, when you say it, but it's, there's no other name under heaven by which man may be saved. And so if we are seeking any other path or we are seeking any other destination, it's the wrong path. And so seek Yah's ways, seek his laws, seek the son and seek the kingdom where he may be found. All right, everybody. Uh, Thank you guys. Much love, fam. All right. Shalom.